So I have a two-part question. All right, so you mentioned being a disruptor, being innovative, and like stirring shit up. I might have said that, but might have been not for your words exactly, but I'm you get where I'm going. I'm with you. Okay. So your reputation precedes you. Besides, obviously, raising a strong, independent, entrepreneurship-minded black woman, what are you doing right now to stir shit up? And also, what is your advice for someone who's trying to be a disruptor in the industry? Yeah, no. So, so one, I think I think we all have to answer the question: What problem do we believe we were put on earth to solve? Um, because because sometimes self-proclaiming yourself as a disruptor can trick you into believing that you're solving something versus just disrupting something. Mm -hmm. And so if, if my disruption isn't plugged into a broader strategy of development, then I'm tearing things down without a vision of what has to be there, right? So I think the question is, for those of us that feel we're that, that way, what do I believe, what problem do I believe I'm put here to solve? What do I believe I'm put here to build? And that way, even my disruption is productive. Two, I think we have to give ourselves room for personal evolution. So I have no idea what my personal trajectory was going to be when I went to work for the NAACP. I knew that at that time in my life, at 25 years old, that I wanted to insert my gift into ensuring that young people were prepared to create change in the community that they were in. The dysfunction of the NAACP and the abuse that I received while there was the greatest learning experience I've ever had. And simultaneously, I knew when it was over. I had no idea what was going to happen next. So when I got on BET, it wasn't because I wanted to be on TV. I actually had no desire. I had as much desire to be on BET as I had a desire to work for the NAACP. I thought the NAACP was a bunch of bougie Negroes that just sat around having lunches and dinners and, and conferences and never did any legitimate work. And I went there because as a 25 year old, they gave me credibility, they gave me budget, they gave me access, they gave me the ability to take what I had been doing as a college leader at the University of Toledo and do it on a scale that I could not have done it on my own. Equally, when BT asked me to come on, I'm like, eh, y'all kind of shaky. I've spent the last four years trying to build a level of credibility with the NAACP, and you asking me, do I want to come on? I don't know. Um, so when I was asked, do I want to come on 106 in Park or Rap City, I'm like, I can't do 106. Because AJ and Free literally were yelling on a thousand from the time the show started to the time the show ended. And it was an artist-driven show. Rap City was not as popular from a number standpoint, but from a culture standpoint, people leaned in to Tigger. So I'm like, well, I can come in and me and Tigger can chop up some stuff once a week and then I can bounce. Stephen Hill was like, bet, you're going to be Tigger's cousin, we're going to call you Cousin Jeff, and we're going to start taping next week. And I was like, Cousin Jeff, dog, this is already a good team. Now you got me looking crazy. He said, trust me, it'll work. I said, will you censor me? He said, no. And I tried. I tried to get censored. And in seven years on Rap City, they never censored me. My point is that we're constantly playing chess. And as a disruptor, the next moves aren't always going to be clear. But if we can be clear about what the options are, connected with the problem we're attempting to solve, so that we choose the vehicle, whether it's this corporate job, or whether it's an entrepreneurial venture, or whether it's as an investor, all of us constantly are dealing with what are the best options to create the impact that we want to create that are most in line with who I am and what I ultimately want to have as ROI. Right? And, and a disruptor is no different. Sometimes we think a disruptor is so counterculture that the decision-making process is different. The decision-making process should be the same. The outcome that we want as disruptors is just often different. Does that make sense? <laughs>